Hey guys, it's Thorin. I'm home from work, wine in hand. Um, I'd been wanting to do a video for last week's Pagan Challenge um, about Books of Shadows, except I've made like a billion videos about Books of Shadows and um, showing off my own in a couple of them. Um, and like many of the folks who I subscribe to, I could talk about books ad nauseum, on and on. Um, it's one of my favorite subjects. Um, both other people's books that I hoard, um, and then the books that I write myself. Um, I have kept journals my entire life. Um, when I was in first grade, our we actually learned how to write by keeping these construction paper journals and at the beginning of each month. Um, we would, you know, decorate a new journal, and of course, for most first graders, it's completely incomprehensible, and I can barely even read anything. Um, my uh, my teacher always had nice things to say in the margins, but I'm not convinced that she knew what I was talking about either. Um, so that was how I learned to write, and uh, the, that journaling exercise was required my entire elementary school career. So by the time I was older and could actually write, I was already a really avid journaler. Um, so when I started practicing Wicca and exploring different kinds of witchcraft and um, getting into this idea of there being a, like this idea that there were magic books in the world had already been pre-established just because I was already a reader and already a writer as a kid. Um, so it was very natural you know, when Silver Ravenwolf and Scott Cunningham told me it was time to, you know, get a binder and start writing down my, my witch stuff, right? I was all gung-ho because I was really already doing that about the rest of my life. Um, so the idea that one of my journals would inherently become magical was really exciting. Um, so keeping, keeping a book has never been um, a problem for me. Um, what I will say before I show you the thing I want to show you um, is that the thing that really that really kind of changed the game for me, like the thing that um, I see a lot of people running into when they talk about their own books of shadows, um, is journaling. Journaling is a skill, right? The ability to sit down and jot down your thoughts routinely, whether that means writing like really cohesive and lengthy. Um, pieces about your day and your innermost thoughts, or whether that means just, you know, jotting ideas. Um, that's, that's an acquired skill. Like, that's something that you have to practice. You don't just wake up one day and have the ability to do that. Um, so I think what happens is when a lot of folks get into witchcraft and they're introduced to this idea of keeping a magical record book, um, they, they jump into it the same way that, like new athletes jump into like going to a gym or something where if you, hi, um, if you've never worked out before and like January rolls around and you're like, I'm going to get in shape. Right. And you just go out and you buy yourself a tub of whey powder and you sign up for a gym and you're like, I'm going to go five times a week. Like you will fail. Like you just will. Okay. Because you can't just introduce something new into your life that, that that's that drastic and then expect it to work out the way you want it to. Like, you have to build, right? Like, maybe go to the gym, like, like twice a week, right? Maybe just, like, walk gently for 20 minutes before you think, I'm going to run five miles even though I've never run before, right? Um, like, that, that sounds silly to us, but that's the thing that we go into keeping a book of shadows with. Like, I've never written before and I've never journaled, but let me go and spend this you know, this huge amount of money on a handmade leather book with 5,000 pages in it, and I'm going to write every day, and it's going to be full and magical. Like, it just isn't, <laughs> okay? Um, I, I haven't met the person who goes from not being a record keeper to suddenly being able to keep this, you know, this perfect kind of idyllic leather book that looks like something out of Practical Magic, you know, overnight. Um, it's something that you, that you build, um, and I think we have a tendency to not be very forgiving with ourselves, right? When we don't instantly produce the practical magic book. Um, you know, you build into it. Like, if you've never kept a journal before, like, start start with a notebook, right? Start by writing in the margins of your books. Like, start, like, you start small and you build. Um, 
So, like, that, that's important. Um, and part of that is, is just writing anywhere all the time. Um, but I was going to say, like, the thing that kind of was the game changer for me was realizing that I didn't have to write in one book. I didn't have to write in one kind of book with one kind of pen, right? I could keep a bunch of different kinds of notebooks and it didn't matter, like some of them are fancy and some of them are binders and some of them are just, you know, like scraps of paper that I glue in somewhere else later. Um, the the thing to go for was, was volume, right? Like you want to write a lot. You don't necessarily need it to be beautiful all the time. It's more important that you're, you're consistently producing something and building. Um, I find that re whether it's a nice leather book or it's a spiral bound notepad, um, when it's full, it tends to look really awesome anyway, even if your handwriting is terrible. Um, so I think like that's the important thing to strive for as far as keeping books. Um, so if you want, you can you can go through my video backlog and there's at least there's at least two or three on Books of Shadows, and I've written um, I've got at least one Pathios blog about my books, but. Now that I've rambled at you for six minutes, um, the thing I actually wanted to show you was a different kind of book that um, I haven't met anybody else who keeps one like this, um, at least not as a witch, right? I know a lot of scholars who do this, and this is actually a technique I picked up in grad school, uh, and that's, that's the reading notebook, right? So... This is not a journal, although it kind of functions that way in the end, right? If you're clever about it, um, the choices that you make about the choices that you make about what you read, and then the kinds of notes that you take, that says something about you too. Like, there's no such thing as objective note taking, okay? Um, so instead of like underlining or writing in the margins, I always have um, just sheets of paper nearby when I read. Um, I've kept just plain, like, 8.5 by 11, um, spiral notebooks, but lately I've been gravitating towards these mini, um, three-ring binders, just because the paper that they make for these is small enough that it fits inside of most books, so I can just tuck in some blank paper and then carry the book around and tuck them into the notebook later. And what I do, um, I've got my... This, I've got a couple of these, but this little binder is, has some sectional tabs, and it's divided by um, basic general subject matter, right? So I've got a tab for Wicca. I've got a tab for um, non-Wiccan craft. I've got a tab for general, like, Western esotericism. I've got a tab for um, contemporary paganism. I've got a tab for magical techniques, right? Um, and that's just this binder. Um, and... What I do is, regardless of the book that I'm reading, I take notes while I go, okay? So right now I'm reading Philip Heselton's biography of Dorian Valiente, and it'll look, it'll look something like this, right? Like, I date everything, and I'll write the section, what it is that I'm reading, um, you know, introduction, forward, whatever, chapter one, um, so that I can go back later. Um, and I just take notes as I write, and it's whatever strikes me as interesting, it's thoughts that I have, it's connections that I make to other books, it's things I didn't know, right? So, like, here's, here's Valiente's little family tree, right, that I sketched out for myself. Um, if I have thoughts about, um, the particular way the writer has phrased something, or if I want to, if I think I might want to quote something later for something that I write, I'll actually write out the quote and then the citation, right? So that I have it, okay? And I, I know it sounds kind of nuts, okay? Um, but the reason that I do this is because um, I, don't, I don't forget things this way. I never have to reread a book, okay? Um, if I write, the act of taking notes while I read helps me to retain things, like, and you get, you get to be kind of scary about it later, like, I remember on what page that, that quote was from, like, I remember what that author said in chapter six and who he was referring to, and I can do it years after the fact, okay, um, and then if I, you know, if I forget things or if I want to, if I want to refresh my memory about something, I can go back to my notebook, I can look up that particular book, and I can go, oh, Let's pull it out again. The information you want is in chapter three. Okay. Um, it's, 
maybe it's kind of nuts, right? Like this is this is me being a nerd in a lot of ways, but um, it's been really valuable. Um, especially if you're any kind of writer or you're putting together any kind of larger project for whatever reason. Um, I learned this technique in grad school from one of my advisors um, and it really saved my butt during my comps, right? Um, comps are basically this awful like inhuman process where um, you get these massive, massive reading lists um, that are actually physically impossible to complete in the time period that they give you. And theoretically, you've already read it all, but in reality, you definitely haven't. And you have to show up and they shut you in a tiny room with nothing. And you have to type responses to some mysterious question provided by usually a professor who you don't know all that well, um, referring to this massive reading list, okay? Because theoretically, you've mastered everything, which is why it's a master's degree, okay? But really, you just do a lot of drinking and crying the day before, and you just kind of hope for the best, okay? Um, anyway, this is what I did when I was preparing for my comps exams. Um, oh, by the way, there's more than one of them, right? It's a series. I had three, and it was hellish. Um, so, but I took the technique, and it's worked really well for um, when I'm doing research on craft-related stuff. Um, I've gotten so that this is what I do whenever I read any kind of nonfiction. Um, it's been really good for my memory. It helps me to make connections. Um, and, you know, if I want to give the book away later or if I misplace it or whatever, like, I, I still have the notes. Let's be real. I've, like, never given a book away ever. But, <laughs> um, but anyway, this, is, this makes for a really valuable companion to a book of shadows or any kind of journal. Um, and it can be really funny, like I go back through notes, um, like my, my notes when I was first reading Robert Cochran stuff is like really funny because I just, you know, I, I'd, I'd been on a, a pretty, a pretty strong feminist kick and like, you know, I'm just like really just like irritated about everything and you can tell in the kind of notes that I'm taking. Um, so it can be really informative about yourself too. So just an idea, right? Um... Yeah, so a little different, but I hope you guys are well, and Oliver doesn't really care if you are well or not, because he is a cat, but I'd like to imagine that he would care if he was cognitively capable, so goodbye!